So, okay. Good evening, guys. So, let's start with the topic. And today's topic is vasculitis. And this is fairly a difficult topic. One, because there are too many varieties of vasculitis. And two, it is a bit factual as well. So, it is difficult to remember. And the only way to remember this is going through this topic again and again. And what we have tried to do is we have tried to simplify the topic. And like you in general tend to learn this topic in pathology and medicine separately, but we here have tried to combine both the information from the pathology and medicine as well. And I've done the notes so that both the topics will be covered. I think so most of the important topic, important points have been covered. So from both point of view, whether you're in second year or fourth year, Think so with this notes, you'll be able to write your theory questions. And if appearing for your entrance exam, I think so, this notes will be more than enough to answer all your questions as well, because more or less it includes everything from previous year question paper. So let's begin with it. And what all topics it will be covered under is classification and the classification and large vessel vasculitis, medium vessel vasculitis, small vessel vasculitis. And few questions. Okay, so let's start. Uh, vasculitis, vasculitis, by definition, it's nothing but inflammation of the vessel wall. Inflammation of the vessel wall. In simple terms, vasculitis is nothing but inflammation of vessel wall. Now let's look at how we classify this. So it can be one. It can be based. Uh, it can be classified based on the pathology. Nothing but how the disease affects it. The mechanism, pathogenesis of the disease. Based on that, we can classify. One more is based on the size of the vessel it involves. We can classify. So firstly, let's see pathologically how we classify. One is primary disorder of the vessel wall itself. Another is secondary due to some other secondary disease. This happens. So primary one, it will be because of antibody mediated. Damage. What happens over here? Antibody goes, deposits on the blood vessel. After that, this deposition of antibody to the blood vessel triggers the inflammatory cycle and for, goes forward and damages the vessel. So, what are the antibody mediated? This is very important. This whole table is important because each thing can be asked as an MCQ. So, very, very important table. So, antibody mediated can be Wechner's glenomatosis. Churg-Strauss syndrome and microscopic polyangitis. Okay, so then comes so Wechner's. It was previously called Wechner's, but now it is called as granulomatosis with polyangitis. That is the present term that is being used. Next comes how next damage caused to the blood vessel will be immune complex mediated. What happens over here is antigen antibody are already formed. This antigen antibody comes attacks the blood vessel that triggers the inflammatory cycle. So immune complex mediated can be IgA vasculitis and polyarthritis nodosa. So the next one will be T cell mediated, T cell mediated damage, T cell mediated damage to the blood vessel. So what all can be there? One is giant cell arthritis. Second one is Takayasu arthritis. Third one is again, Churg-Strauss syndrome and Wegener's granulomatosis, presently called as granulomatosis with polyangitis. What happens over here, this T cell mediated in inflammation or the damage to the blood vessel goes further and causes granuloma. What type of granuloma it forms? It causes necrotizing granuloma. So it is a necrotizing granuloma is formed. So that is what you'll expect to find in a biopsy. You'll find granulomas that are necrotizing granulomas in biopsy in these four diseases. So the next one is anti-endothelial antibody over here. The antibodies are directed directly against the anti endothelium, endothelium of the blood vessel. And the example for this is Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki disease. So a very important table. And most of the secondary vasculitis syndromes are immune complex mediated. Immune complex mediated. So one, it will be because of many any autoimmune disorder. Since immune complex is formed, most of the autoimmune disorders can cause secondary vasculitis like lupus, rheumatoid, sarcoidosis, and all. Next one, it can be drug induced. Drug induced. Third, it can be because of hepatitis C, which is nothing but cryoglobulinemic vasculitis. Next one, it can be because of hepatitis B. 
hepatitis B is associated with which type of vasculitis? Can you guys answer? Which type of vasculitis hepatitis B is associated with? Yes, very good, very good. It is polyarthritis nodus. This will be polyarthritis nodus. Okay. So the next type of classification is based on the size of the vessel. Over here, what is important is the classification that is used. It is termed as modified Chapel Hill classification. But just remembering the classification is of not much of use anymore in the current pattern of exams. They tend to go more towards more towards detail of the classification. So let's see. One is large vessel vasculitis. This affects the larger vessels like iota and its direct branches. That can be giant cell arthritis and Arthritis. Next one affecting the medium sized vessels. This will be polyarthritis nodosa and Kawasaki disease. Next one will be small vessel vasculitis. Under this small vessel vasculitis, we can have two types. One is ANCA mediated. ANCA mediated. ANCA stands for anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody. And this ANCA is of two types. One is C ANCA, one is P ANCA. So, what do they mean by C ANCA and P ANCA? C is nothing but cytoplasmic ANCA. That is, on doing immunofluorescence, the stain will be taken taken stain will be taken up by the cytoplasmic. Cytoplasmic will be the pattern. Stain will be taken up by the cytoplasm. But in P ANCA, which is nothing but perinuclear ANCA, the pattern will be perinuclear. Around the nucleus, the immunofluorescence stain will be taken up. And one more thing to satisfy for C ANCA is. C ANCA associated with on doing ELISA, on doing ELISA, on doing ELISA, antibodies will be against anti proteinase 3 in case of C ANCA, anti proteinase 3 in case of C ANCA, and anti myeloperoxidase in case of P ANCA. Okay. So, what is C ANCA? Predominantly, C ANCA is vaginous granulomatosis. Very, very important. Predominantly, C ANCA is vaginous granulomatosis. Predominantly, P ANCA will be jerk straws, microscopic polyangiitis, certain drugs like hydrolysing, propyl thioracyl, very important. These two drugs can cause P ANCA mediated vasculitis, hydrolysin and propyl thioracyl. Now, there is something else called as atypical P ANCA. Anyone can tell what is atypical P ANCA? Atypical P ANCA. Okay, I've already mentioned. Atypical P ANCA is. On doing immunofluorescence, you get perinuclear stain. But this second criteria won't be satisfied. On doing ELISA, on doing ELISA, anti-myeloperoxidase antibodies won't be there. Okay. So this can be in case of autoimmune hepatitis, primary sclerosing choronitis, IBD, rheumatoid arthritis, all these things. Okay. So next one being what else? Small vessel vasculitis can be ANCA negative. Most of the ANCA negative vasculitis are immune complex mediated, as we have read before. It can be HSP or IgA vasculitis, SLE, trioglobulinic, hypersensitive vasculitis, and good pasture syndrome. So, now what happens? What will be the pathogenesis? In case of ANCA mediated, there will be neutrophil activation. Activation of neutrophil, anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody comes, attacks, activation of neutrophil takes place. Then the granules which are present inside the neutrophils comes out to the surface, comes out to the surface, and the blood will have, anyways, the antibodies. This will cause degranulation, and this degranulation will go further cause tissue damage and vasculitis. Okay. So next, something else that can be asked in our MCQs is which of them predominantly involves veins? Which of the following? This can be asked in PGI type, like which of the following which involves veins, or it can be asked as single word, single answer types, which of the following does not include the veins. So that's why this is important. This is taken from Robin's table. So it is very important. Again, it is a probable question in our future. It can be asked. It can be leukocytoclastic vasculitis, Bechet's disease, and Bugas disease. Okay, very important. In the same way, which of the following involves capillaries? In the same way, which of the following involves capillaries? Can you guys answer? Multiple answers can be correct in this. Anyone with the answer? Okay. Yes, correct. Microscopic polyangiitis is correct. What else? Okay, okay. The not tells it's pan and MPA. Anyone else would like to answer? 
this is accepted this is accepted anything else this as well is taken from robins directly from the table yes very good it is bechets bechets and microscopic polyangiitis okay so let's move on let's move ahead to large vessel vasculitis as we saw in our classification first was large vessel vasculitis there were two diseases one is giant cell arthritis another one is takayasu so let's see the case scenario let's see whether you guys will be able to diagnose simple case a patient 64 years old presents with complaints of fever fatigue multiple joint pain and weight loss for about of about 5 kg in the past 3 months this is nothing but features of systemic inflammation then comes patient also complains of several episodes of numbness burning pain over right hand usually on exposure to cold so they are talking about numbness and burning pain means on exposure to cold means he is experiencing tanosia phenomena what does that mean that means blood vessel supplying the upper limb has been thickened that is not supplying enough blood which is leading to tanosia phenomena on exposing to a precipitating factor like cold water next one he also gets severe throbbing headache severe throbbing headache in the distribution of temporal artery so on examination pulse is feeble over right hand bp discrepancies present between the two upper limbs anyone with the diagnosis okay giant cell arthritis okay very good all of you are going with giant cell arthritis now if the same patient if i have told patient is around 35 years patient is around 35 years what would be your diagnosis what would be your diagnosis now what would you think of that time okay pooja she tells yes very good very good you we would have thought of with the following features it is so it was showing that it would not large vessel we could have thought of takayasu arthritis we could have thought of takayasu arthritis so these two are very good differential diagnosis one involves upper age group one involves lower age group but both of them since they involve large vessel both of them tend to have similar complaints so takayasu means usually it is usually it is less than 40 years giant cell will be usually above 50 years okay okay so very good differential diagnosis so let's see our first one giant cell arthritis epidemiology as mentioned already usually affect above 50 years females are involved more what was the pathogenesis we saw in the starting our first classification pathogenesis for gci was t cell mediated which led to formation of granuloma necrotizing granuloma so t cell mediated on doing biopsy what do we see one is intimal thickening will be there intimal thickening will be there this will lead to narrowing of the luminal diameter see as we see over here luminal diameter is narrow second one is what granuloma formation was there but what is characteristic for gca is this granuloma is distributed over internal elastic lamina as we see over here as we see over here granuloma is distributed over internal elastic lamina see we see one granuloma over here one more granuloma over here one more granuloma over here so they are distributed work and one more characteristic feature is focal destruction of internal elastic lamina is present focal destruction of internal internal elastic lamina is present see one over here one over here there is destruction of internal elastic lamina so can you guys name which stain is this which stain is used for this b they have stain blood vessel that means it is must be an elastic stain no no not a b it must be an elastic elastin stain so what can it be next coming to clinical features yes what have one gives in stain very good next coming to clinical features clinical features one any vasculitis for that matter they'll have some amount of because it is a it's chronic inflammation that is going on in the body they will have the systemic inflammatory features no matter which vasculitis it is so what we look for is one is features of systemic inflammation another one is features specific to that particular disease so this is the normal features which we can have in most of the things like arthralgia myalgia fatigue fever anorexia but what can be characteristic over here is weight loss for more than 3 months weight loss for more than 3 months with all these features will be diagnostic of something called as polymyalgia rheumatica polymyalgia rheumatica so what do we see that 
two third of the patients have polymyalgia rheumatica. So two third of the patients with giant cell arthritis can have polymyalgia rheumatica, and this pain is usually early in the morning in case of polymyalgia rheumatica. And how do we treat polymyalgia rheumatica with low dose steroids? Patient respond well with low dose steroids. Okay. Next, coming to which specific artery is affected. So as we see over here, this again can be asked as MCQs. First, most common is superficial temporal artery. But since most of us know it is superficial temporal artery, what do examiners do? They remove superficial temporal artery from the question and keep other three. So the next one to involve will be vertebral artery. Then comes the ophthalmic artery. Then comes posterior ciliary artery. If posterior ciliary artery is involved, then it is nothing but arthritic type of EION. As we said, ready in our of them, there are two types of AION. One is arthritic, one is non-arthritic. Arthritic was associated with giant cell arthritis and patients presented with altitudinal hemianopia. Altitudinal hemianopia. So, so altitudinal hemianopia. This used to be the visual field defect. This happens. Next comes. Yeah. So, what will be the clinical features when these arteries are affected? If temporal artery and other branches of ECI are affected, you will have those localizing features like throbbing headache. Throbbing headache, very important. Then comes diplopia, jaw claudication, jaw claudication, facial pain, scalp pain, all these things. If branches of internal carotid artery affected, very, very dangerous, it can lead to blindness. That's why it should be diagnosed early and treated with steroids to avoid this complication of blindness. And other branches of iota as well can be affected. As we saw in our patient, supply and artery was affected. That's why he had chronicating pain. Okay. So, how do we diagnose screening? We use ESR greater than 50. ESR greater than 50 will be screening. And for confirmatory, we use temporal artery biopsy. Temporal artery biopsy. Minimum length of 2 cm. Why do we take such large piece? Why do we take such large piece? Or in case it comes negative also on if still we are having high suspect, we repeat this test as well. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? Anyone? Yes, very good. There will be segmental involvement. Segmental involvement will be there, no? That's why. Okay. So, and what are the, this is the American rheumatology criteria, American rheumatology criteria. One age of onset greater than 50 years, which we had already mentioned. Another one is new onset headache. Temporal artery abnormality, like there can be tenderness or thickening, elevated ESR as we saw greater than 50, and abnormal biopsy. Abnormal biopsy. This is the criteria given by American Rheumatology Society. Next, we'll see how do we treat the patient. Patient responds well to steroids. Patient responds well to steroids. Okay. And we give aspirin as well to decrease ischemic complications. To decrease because there will be luminal narrowing. No, it can lead to ischemia. That's why we give aspirin. Next. Next, large vessel vasculitis can be Takayasu arthritis. Takayasu arthritis is the next one. Since Takayasu has more predilection to involve subclavian artery, and that as well causes luminal narrowing because more, both of them were T-cell mediated. Both of them have same pathogenesis. But this tends to, that tends to involve temporal artery more. This tends to involve the subclavian artery more. Okay. Or the branches are from the arch of iota. This usually involves. Okay. So that's why this as well will have luminal thickening. But only difference is over here, usually in younger population, like less than 40 years. Pathogenesis is the same, T-cell mediated. What will that lead to? Again, same as our previous thing, intimal thickening will be there, fibrosis will be there, narrowing is will be there, as we see over here. Fibrosis and granuloma formation, that was the basic pathogenesis, which we saw. And on doing arteriography of the arch of iota, you will find multiple narrowings. Narrowings will be found, as we see the arrow mark now. So, Again, as mentioned earlier, it usually involves arch of iota, all the direct branches, and this is classically affected. And other, since it's large vessel vasculitis, other direct branches of iota as well can get affected. So if subclavian artery is involved, which is the most commonly affected, upper limb claudication will be there and decrease in pulse. So pulselessness, pulseless disease, it's called as. And DP discrepancies between the two limbs can be there. If celiac artery is affected, mesenteric ischemia they can have. If carotids or vertebral artery is affected, recurrent TIA and stroke can be there. If renal artery is affected, renal artery stenosis can take place. Coronary MI can result in. And again, the this is the criteria. 
this is the criteria given by the same american demand again one is age of the patient less than 40 years claudication of extremities decreased pulse we saw all these features we saw they have just put it as a criteria bp difference of greater than 10 mmhg because there will be narrowing we can hear a bru and on doing arteriogram as we saw in the picture there can be abnormality there will be constriction so again diagnosis one is esr will be elevated one that criteria has to be fulfilled and for gold standard in this case is usually very important in all most of the other vascularities gold standard is biopsy but over here gold standard is because biopsy will be can be the same gca and this no so gold standard will be ct angiogram ct angiogram and detecting this detecting this narrowings okay so next treatment is almost same as that you give glucocorticoids if they are refractory then we can give methotrexate okay since there will be narrowing we can do angioplasty and stunting as well so let's see whether you can diagnose this triad what what is this triad triad of vestibulitis internal keratitis and aortitis what triad is this Yes, excellent. This is Kogan triad. Kogan triad. This as well can involve large vessel. This as well can involve large vessel. And for this again, treatment is steroids. Treatment is steroids only. Okay. So next, let's move on to medium vessel vasculitis. We have, we are done with large vessel vasculitis. Let's see medium vessel vasculitis. So let's look at the case scenario. we'll have we have two case scenarios for here one first one is a 3 year old kid which presents with complaints of fever in 6 days kid has conjunctival injection but there was no discharge from the conjunctiva that means it is not infective in etiology yes okay you guys have already diagnosed it very good avantika these are classical features of kawasaki disease these are classical features of kawasaki disease so that was the first case that was the first case what is the second case now a 8 month old infant had fever for the last 9 days workup was done and no etiology could be established since it was long duration fever more than 3 days they did all the serology worked up for all the infective etiology but they couldn't come up with a proper diagnosis as to what caused the fever lab reports showed this what can be the diagnosis for this what can they think of now anyone okay everyone is telling pan but again since with such long duration of fever such long duration of fever and we are not able to find out etiology and kawasaki disease mostly affecting the younger population yes we should still very good spurti we should still consider kawasaki it is if the child has to be worked up for kawasaki we can't tell kawasaki is the etiology but the child has to be worked up for kawasaki why is it so important why is it so important to work up for kawasaki what to prevent what to prevent what yes very good young young onset mi we can prevent so let's read about kawasaki disease definition acute febrile mucocutaneous syndrome so muco muco because it can involve mucosa like strawberry tongue cutaneous because it causes skin rash lymph node because it can cause cervical lymphadenopathy so everything is there in the definition itself acute acute in nature presents with fever and all this feature acute cutaneous mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome epidemiology usually younger population less than 5 years males predominantly being involved more than 80% of cases are less than 5 years and why this disease is so so important because most it is presently the most common it has overtake even rheumatic heart disease it is a most common cause of cardiac death among children secondary to acquired heart disease it has even overtaken rhd next what is the pathogenesis we read it is anti endothelial cell antibody so what could have been the etiology they are still suspecting that it can be a post infective event or genetics as well so 
pathogenesis was anti endothelial cell antibody morphology what do we find dense full amount of blood vessel in, in being involved so transmural inflammatory infiltrates with high predilection to coronary artery coronary artery it has very high predilection how do we diagnose we have the criteria fever for greater than 5 days duration with four of the five features and how do we remember this this is the mnemonic cream conjunctivitis will be there rashes will be there yes increased platelets will be found on doing work up when they do when we do work up we do find increased platelets as well rashes will be there that was that increased platelet criteria as well is given by aha american heart association edema or erythema can be there lymphadenopathy as we saw cervical lymphadenopathy can be there mucosal changes like strawberry tongue can be there and recent update this was the second case suspect kawasaki in an infant with fever greater than 7 days without any if we cannot get any other explanations we can suspect kawasaki so when we do our work up when we find there are four to five laboratory criteria along with increased platelets we can think of kawasaki in that infant so treatment is simple best is ivig ivig is the best it is a treatment of choice along with aspirin to avoid ischemic complications if it's refractory go for higher drugs like azathioprine and steroids and this is a newer drug it can be asked in your mcq not used though as so much but it can be asked in your since it's new it can be asked in your mcq ulinostatin which is a neutrophil elastase inhibitor what is this this finding as well is seen what is this image <laughs> anything else it is usually seen after the attack of kawasaki disease like 2 to 3 weeks after that you will find this again it's characteristic yes very good money it is buse line it is buse line buse line why do we see it after 2 to 3 weeks is it buse line this is nothing but this line is nothing but due because of the disease event because of the disease event the growth of nail bed got affected growth growth of nail bed got affected this line becomes prominent since the nail bed is over here and nail tends to grow this way after 2 to 3 weeks this finding becomes prominent that's all so let's see next case scenario let's see next case scenario again two cases we have again two cases we have one is a 45 year old patient with history of having had multiple sex partners comes with complaints of all these things since 4 months he gives history of passing red color urine hematuria is present since 1 month as well on examination he was pale bp was elevated screening for hepatitis b turned out to be positive okay you guys think it is fine then what will be the next case again the same 45 year old patient he also has same multiple sex partners comes with again same complaints similar complaints he also has his bp elevated presenting similarly but over here his gfr was reduced screening for hepatitis again turned out to be positive in this case ESR was elevated, but rheumatoid factor as well was elevated in this patient. Rheumatoid factor as well was elevated. Now, what do you suspect? Okay, scleroderma. Yes, very good, very good, very good. It, this was a case of hepatitis C. Intentionally, I didn't mention, but rheumatoid factor was still positive. That will still go to essential mixed cryoglobulinemia. Since this is hepatitis B, we can think of PAN. But nothing like hepatitis B is more associated with PAN. Hepatitis C is more associated with EMC. But it can interchange as well. But first suspect will be PAN in this case because of hepatitis B. First suspect will be essential mixed cryoglobulinemia in this case because it will be hepatitis C. And rheumatoid factor as well was positive okay so let's see polyarthritis nodosa epidemiology middle aged population affects males more so 30% of the associated with hepatitis b yes yes correct but 1% pan associated with hepatitis b so this is that 30 is to 1 rule pathogenesis 
immune complex mediated. This we saw in the starting. This immune complex mediated damage to vessel wall leads to fibrinoid necrosis. Okay. How are the vessels affected? Maximum affected is kidney, followed by coronary vessels, followed by liver, followed by GIT in the decreasing order of frequency. But very important to remember is pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery is never involved. The disease nature is so that it never involves the pulmonary artery. Okay. Yes, Siddhesh, very good. It never involves pulmonary artery. This goes and further weakens the arterial wall. This fibrinoid necrosis and inflammation, it weakens the arterial wall. But in our previous things, we saw that what was the picture was there? There was luminal thickening, which led to all the complications, systemic complications. But in pan, the disease nature is so that what does this do? This goes, damages blood vessel and causes microaneurysms. It causes microaneurysms, okay? Glomerular nephritis will be present more so in essential mixed fibrinemia. This one will usually present with microaneurysms. That's why the patient had hematuria. This rupture of this microaneurysms led to hematuria. Okay. So this will cause, and some one more characteristic is segmental necrosis will be there. See over here, this one segment is affected. No, so they can in our exam, they can just give this HPE as the Thing and they, they might ask us to diagnose, but because this is characteristic, because only this amount, this segment of the artery is involved, this segmental necrotizing transmural inflammation. Okay, so clinical features what do we see? Maximum, we saw that kidney is involved. What happens? Microaneurysms that will lead to renal failure later on, initially hypertension, hematuria, and all these things. And arthritis can be there, arthralgia can be there, myalgia can be there. Again, what is Important CNS manifestation is, is mononeuritis multiplexa. Mononeuritis multiplexa can be there. This is a very important CNS, CNS manifestation along with peripheral neuropathy. GIT can get involved if GIT, celiac, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, all those things will be there. Skin rashes, any vas like vasculitis picture. Coronary artery can be involved. Genitourinary tract can be involved. That will lead to testicular pain can come. Test Again, this also there will be microaneurysms. This will lead to epidemics and testicular pain, so scrotal pain will be there. CNS involvement can be there. So what is this finding? What is this finding? Skin involvement. This is a patient of pan with skin involvement. What finding is this? Something very characteristic. This can be asked as image based question. Yes, this is nothing but levido reticularis. Levido reticularis. Okay. So, diagnosis is biopsy. Angiography will reveal all these multiple microaneurysms. Multiple microaneurysms is revealed on angiography. Next treatment is against steroids if refractory, higher order drugs. You can combine it with cyclophosphamide. Okay. Next is small vessel vasculitis. We'll deal with, we'll finish up essential mixed pyroglobulinemia because it's a very good DD for PAN. So first small vessel will be essential mixed cryoglobulinemia. Immune mediated damage will be there. What are cryoglobulins? What are cryoglobulins? These are something that are secreted in the body, which gets precipitated in like on exposure to colder temperature. So peripheries will get affected in this. Okay. So epidemi epidemiology, middle-aged people, male is more affected. Even though it is called essential, it's a misnomer. Essential is usually called when the disease is idiopathic when the disease is idiopathic but over here most of them tend to have a primary etiology and most common being multiple myeloma most common being multiple myeloma what is the difference between this and this is in multiple myeloma rheumatoid factor will be negative because there are actually there will be three types of cryoglobulins type 1 type 2 type 3 okay so type 1 will be usually monoclonal monoclonal and this has RF negative. RF negative is, will be there. Type 2 and type 3, this is a mixture of mono and poly. And this is purely polyclonal. Okay. These two are associated with other things like chronic hepatitis C and B, connective tissue disorders, other lymphoproliferative disorders and all. So, and these two can be RF positive also. RF positive also. That is the difference between this and this. So pathogenesis, these cryoglobulins, these cryoglobulins which are there, they go and precipitate. They go and precipitate. This will lead to ischemic complications. Since they precipitate in the blood vessel, it will lead to ischemic complication. Okay. 
So next features, normal features of systemic inflammation will be there, all these things. And if kidney gets involved, this causes glomerular nephritis. This one causes glomerular nephritis like RPGN and any other vessels can be involved since it's a small vessel vasculitis. Diagnosis, one is cryoprecipitates from plasma that will directly diagnose the disease. Again, as we mentioned, RA factor positive, you should always not forget to screen for hepatitis C and as with any other vasculitis, ESR will be raised and anemia will be raised. So now let's move on to this. Can anyone connect this? Connect? What is the diagnosis? Yes, very good, Sneha. Because there was nasal bridge deformity. Again, there is granuloma formation. And this is the characteristic lung feature. Cavitating lesion is there. In CT as well, cavitating lesion is there. So next we will see small vessel vasculitis that are ANCA-mediated. ANCA-mediated. So what are ANCA-mediated vasculitis? What all are ANCA-mediated vasculitis? We saw earlier, C predominantly C and K, predominantly P and K. Under predominantly C and K is granulomatosis with polyangitis, which is nothing but wetness. Under this comes microscopic polyangitis. So these two usually tend to have similar clinical features. How do you differentiate them? One is both of them have necrotizing vasculitis. Both of them have necrotizing vasculitis, but in granuloma formation, granuloma formation is present in this, is not present in this, is not present in this. That's the difference. This we can see in our initial table also. T cell mediated, wetness was there, wetness was there over here, wetness was there over here. Okay. Granuloma formation was there. That is how we differentiate these two. And next one, other one, which is P and K is eosinophilic vasculitis, nothing but jerk straws syndrome, jerk straws syndrome, jerk straws. Go here, it will be characteristic. Eosinophilia will be there. So easy to diagnose this. Eosinophilia will be there. And the presentation itself is different for jerk straws syndrome. Here, the patient will present with asthma and all. So totally different presentation. But these two can present the same way. Okay. So first, let's see wetness, wetness granulomatosis. First among the ANCA mediated is wetness, which is presently called as granulomatosis with polyangitis. Epidemiology, middle age again, males being more affected, ANCA mediated, which is predominantly C ANCA. So 70% is C ANCA and other 25% is P ANCA. Necrotizing granulomas will be there. 59 necrosis along with granuloma formation as we saw initially. Clinical features, clinical features, it has highest predilection for renals, highest predilection for renals. So it can cause glomerular nephritis, nothing but usually crescent formation will take place. That's why RPG and picture, see, 77% of them can be this. Next coming to upper respiratory tract involvement. Next is upper respiratory tract involvement. What all can be there? Chronic sinusitis can be there. Sinuses will get chronically inflamed. Nasal bridge deformity can be there. Septal, it will go affect the septa. These inflammatory infiltrates go affect the septa, which will lead to nasal bridge deformity or septal perforation can take place. Midline granuloma can be there. Midline granuloma can be there. Serous uteritis media can be there. Subglottic stenosis can be there. These are upper respiratory tract findings. Okay. Next in the line is upper respiratory tract. Then comes pulmonary findings. Then comes pulmonary findings. What all we'll get? As we saw in the previous image, there are multiple thin wall cavities, multiple thin wall cavities. Once that cavity is formed, over there, bacteria can get lodged. So this will lead to lung abscesses. And when the cavity is being formed, due to erosion of the cavities, there will be erosion of the blood vessels as well. That causes alveolar hemorrhages, which will lead to hemoptysis. Okay. And other system as well can get involved, like IEs and others. And these are usual, all the systemic inflammatory features and all can be present. Okay. Peripheral neuropathy can be present. All these things can be present. Then comes, how do we diagnose? One is by ANCA and gold standard is biopsy. Gold standard is biopsy. And usually most of the ANCA mediated vasculitis, how are they treated? They're treated with a combination of cyclophosphamide and glucocorticoids. Cyclophosphamide and glucocorticoids, they treat it for some amount of time. After that, 
for remission of the disease, for remission of the disease, they treat with methotrexate or azathioprine in the remission phase. First is the induction phase. Second is the remission phase. If the patient is refractory, if the patient is refractory, this higher order drugs they can go for. They go. For, they can go for higher order drugs if the patient is refractory, or if the patient comes with relapse, or if the patient comes with relapse, then we can go for. Rituximab or biologicals. Usually, first we go for rituximab. Okay, then comes second one. In ANCA mediated, first is C ANCA mediated. Second was P ANCA mediated. In P ANCA mediated, we saw microscopic polyangiitis. But this clinical feature it shares with vagueness. The vessel wall involvement is similar pattern. But how do we do? We differentiate. There won't be granuloma formation. There won't be granuloma formation. So epidermolysis will be the same. Males again affected. P and K in Robbins says that this disease is also called as hypersensitivity vasculitis. This statement is given by Robbins. Then comes differential diagnosis for this is vagueness, as mentioned. And one more very close differential diagnosis for this is polyarthritis nodosa. Polyarthritis nodosa. Okay. But how do you differentiate it from polyarthritis nodosa? One is lung involvement is more common. Other one is all lesions tend to be of the same age in a patient. Like in polyarthritis nodosa, one lesion if it has occurred today, other lesion can take place after a month. But over here, all the lesions tends to be of the same age. Same age. That is how we differentiate on biopsy and more widely distributed. This is more widely distributed mm -hmm. on microscopy. One there is no granuloma formation. There will be necrotizing vasculitis. Without granuloma formation. Second one, something characteristic of this is the neutrophils which have come into the vessel, they undergo apoptosis. They undergo apoptosis. Okay. So it is called as leukocytoplastic vasculitis as well. Leukocytoplastic vasculitis. So MPA is called as leukocytoplastic vasculitis. Clinical features, since it's a very close DD for these two, Vesnus and Pan, it will share its feature with Vesnus and Pan. Diagnosis is by biopsy. Treatment is like ANCA mediated as discussed over here. Treatment is almost the same as this. Okay. Next was next in the line for ANCA mediated vasculitis was Churg-Strauss syndrome. Churg-Strauss syndrome or eosinophilic vasculitis. So, what are the features? Again, middle age, males greater than females. Again, P ANCA. Again, this is also necrotizing vasculitis. But what is the difference? Is there will be eosinophilia. This eosinophilia will go infiltrate the tissue, which will lead to tissue eosinophilic infiltrates. And ex over here, the granuloma is extravascular granuloma, extravascular granuloma. Next is clinical features. So in this, how does the patient present? Over here, the patient will have, since it is eosinophilia will be there, it is an IgE-mediated disorder, there will be severe asthmatic attacks. We see that even the pathogenesis of this asthma as well is IgE-mediated, so severe asthmatic attacks will be there. Allergic rhinitis and sinusitis can be there. But this again can be an MCQ. Most frequent cause of death is involvement of the cardia. Involvement of the cardia. So as we see in this picture over here, myocardial involvement has led to myocardial involvement. Has led to over here there is pericardial effusion is there. See, we can see over here pericardial effusion is there. In this most frequent cause of death in case of Churg-Strauss is cardiac involvement. Okay, so diagnosis, as mentioned, yes, no, filia would be that yes, no, filia is characteristic for this. Again, yes, will be raised. Biopsy will be gold standard. Treatment is with steroids along with cyclophosphamide. And newer drug which has come in the market will be mepolizumab. Mepolizumab. What is this? What is the mechanism of action of mepolizumab? Anyone? Mechanism of action. Yes, mostly very good. It is anti IL5. Anti IL5. Okay. So, next, let's see. Let's see the next disease of small vessel vasculitis. It is Bechet's. Bechet's. Bechet's is just not small vessel. It can involve medium as well. It can involve medium as well. Okay. And it can involve capillaries also, as we saw, and veins as well, as we saw. So it can involve medium vessel, small vessel, veins, or 
capitalis. So epidemiology usually middle-aged females. It affects more. Okay, but if it presents in male, it has more severe presentation. Okay, this is very important. It is associated with HLA B5 and B51. Very important. Associated with HLA B5 and B51. Okay, pathogenesis systemic perivasculitis with early neutrophil. Important over here is neutrophil infiltrates will be the early neutrophilic infiltrates and that will lead to endothelial swelling. Okay, so next, can you guys answer this question? Which of the following autoantibodies are not found in budgets? This is taken from Harrison. This question has not been asked till now, but yeah, in future it can be asked. It is a very good question which can be asked in the future. Okay, one plus tells not an anti topo isomerase antibody is not associated. Anyone else with the answer? Who just tells alpha inolase? My tells C. Okay, we'll give it to one plus. The answer is anti topo isomerase antibody. So, Becher's disease is associated with alpha inolase of endothelial cells, autobody against this anti selenium binding protein antibody and anti saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody okay so clinical features clinical features one we had seen the triad oral ulcers genital ulcers along with uveitis that was a triad associated with budgets so major criteria is oral lactose ulcers which are recurrent and this ulcer heals without scarring it heals without scarring why it is important is in the minor criteria, similar genital, which are painful ulcers, which are also recurrent, but this one heals with scarring. Okay. Skin involvement, like erythema nodosum, can be there. Eyes, very important. Uveitis will be there. Uveitis will be there. Granulomatous uveitis will be there. Sorry, non granulomatous uveitis it causes. Then this will lead to blindness. So this is the dreaded complication. Retinitis also can take place. And pathology test will be positive. Pathology test will be positive. Any other disease with pathology test positive? Can you guys name any other disease with pathology test positive? This you see in dermat. In dermat, you guys learn it. In a topic called as neutrophilic dermatosis. In a topic called as neutrophilic dermatosis, you read about pathology test. So what it can be? Can you guys name few neutrophilic dermatosis? Anyone? Is it something related to sweet? Is it something related to sweet? Okay. It is also seen in pyoderma gangrenosum. Pyoderma gangrenosum. Sweet syndrome and all, sweet syndrome and all. Because over here, there as well, it is neutrophilic dermatosis. Over here as well, pathology test is positive. This is also, which as well, we, have, we are having neutrophilic infiltrates, no? Correct. That's why in pathology, nothing but intradermal normal saline is injected. Intradermal normal saline is injected and induration is found. So for the diagnosis to take place, one major criteria along with two major criteria has to be there. Systemic features will be arthritis can be there strokes can be there if stroke is there if stroke is there and which which circulation is involved in the brain which circulation can be involved if stroke is there we have already done this at the starting olives yes very good very good what is very important is no no not aca it is superior uh, superior cerebral sinus all those things can get involved because it is venous stroke it is characteristically venous stroke that is very important for us. Okay. If GIT is there, what can it mimic? What can it mimic? Which disease can it mimic if it involves GIT? Yeah. Why Crohn's? Pujashri? Why Crohn's? It mimics. Why does it mimic Crohn's? Anyone? Pujashri tells that it mimics Crohn's. Okay. Yeah. Anti saccharomyces service antibody, same antibody, very good. So it mimics crons, mimics crons. 
okay if gat is involved so treatment how do we treat oral steroids even topical steroids for just the skin involvement for the pain hydroxychloroquine can be given for arthritis thalidomide can be given azathioprine can be given higher drugs when there is systemic involvement we can go for higher drugs okay next in the list of small vessel vasculitis one was anca mediated next one is immune mediated under immune mediated we saw there were many of them few imported ones can be hinoscolin purpura hinoscolin purpura so this is nothing but anaphylactoid purpura or iga vasculitis as well it can be called so epidemiology most common vasculitis in children it is a most common vasculitis in children usually a post infective phenomena this is suspected okay again immune mediated vasculitis okay antigen antibody go deposit so in if it is infective antibodies against the infection so those antigen antibody go and deposit cause the damage classically diagnosed by the tetrad that what are the tetrad types one is involvement of skin which leads to palpable purpura usually most common in distribution is buttocks followed by lower limbs then glomerulonephritis can be there glomerulonephritis usually iga nephropathy takes place next arthritis or arthralgia will be there after followed by colicky abdominal pain colicky abdominal pain because these deposits go block the arteries which lead to colicky abdomen pain diagnosed by what is important it is iga vasculitis so what do we expect we expect serum iga to be high along with esr and crp diagnostic is biopsy biopsy of the kidney because there will be iga deposits causing iga nephropathy it will will have mesangial iga deposits with c3 with c3 complement factor 3 usually it is self limited this disease is usually self limited and in kids it has good prognosis within 3 to 6 months the child will improve if prolonged we can give oral steroids but in case of adults if it present it doesn't have that good prognosis but in kids usually it has very good prognosis and only as less as 1 to 3% will pro progress to end stage renal disease okay so the next one was bugus disease bugus disease or thromboangitis obliterans this we will read in detail in a surgery class in surgery we will read it in detail so just uh small summary of it it usually affect middle age men middle age men highest risk factor associated with this is smoking smoking has the highest risk factor other than that hla b5 a9 as well can be there but this can be asked as a question because what is protective is hla b12 hla b12 is protective pathogenesis what happens segmental necrotizing inflammation will be there segmental necrotizing inflammation of the usually the lower limbs are involved upper limbs as well are involved but lower limbs are involved more than upper limbs okay so first is tibial artery at times radial artery also is involved but what is more characteristic is what is very very characteristic of this is involvement of artery vein and nerve a v n all the three can be involved so this inflammatory infiltrates will go infiltrate the vein and nerve adjacent to it as well so a v n all the three can be involved and on doing biopsy we will find these characteristic microapsis characteristic microapsis are found okay in bugus disease so clinical features will be ranots phenomena will be there because it goes involves the periphery ranots phenomena again involvement of periphery causes claudicating pain on walking for longer distance and yeah as mentioned earlier lower limbs are involved more than upper limbs treatment smoking session cessation pentoxifilin it makes rbc more flexible so it can pass through the narrowed vessels as well aspirin and clopidogrel to prevent the ischemic complications and this is not done as of now previously it used to be done to for the vessels to dilate lumbar sympathectomy so this was to do with vasculitis so in brief we read of large vessel vasculitis which was giant cell and takayasu arthritis so a very good differential diagnosis for these two but this predominantly temporal artery involved predominantly subclavian vessels involved older age group greater than 50 years this involves usually small age group less than 40 years then we came to medium vessel vasculitis one was kawasaki disease kawasaki disease very easy to diagnose because one it involves the kids two 
acute coronary syndrome the kid can present that is why this disease is important that's why it has become the most common cause of acquired heart disease leading to death okay and what is important to remember is criteria criteria is important fever for greater than 5 days with the mnemonic being free and other one is infant greater than 7 days this is a recent update by aha we should suspect kawasaki okay next one was pan polyarthritis nodosa polyarthritis nodosa good di differential diagnosis with emc emc this is more so associated with hepatitis b this is more so as associated with hepatitis c okay so this being the medium vessel then comes small vessel in that anca mediated is first anca mediated which is c anca this is p anca c anca and p anca c anca had vechnas c anca had vechnas this had mpa and chokstros mpa and chokstros these two again had similar features only thing is both will have necrotizing vasculitis that is fibrinoid necrosis will be there but there won't be granuloma granuloma will be negative in microscopic polyangiitis chokstros what is important is eosinophilia eosinophilia will be there eosinophilia is important chokstros is eosinophilia will be there so this as well is essential mixed cryoglobulinemia essential mixed cryoglobulinemia okay so this was anco mediated then we read a few immune mediated immune mediated affecting small vessel vasculitis of which important ones were hsp and hsp and uh, bugus then we read something that specifically affects veins that was bechets that was mm -hmm. bechets so this was to summarize the class now let's look at few questions okay this i think so we already done which of the following is the most common ca cause of vasculitis in children most common cause yes okay everyone is confused but it is enox colon purpura nelson says this nelson says this enox colon purpura okay kawasaki is the most common cause for acquired heart disease leading to this leading to the death okay leading to the death so enox colon purpura so let's see whether you guys can tell this hairy cell leukemia is associated with which vasculitis mm -hmm. Hairy cell leukemia. Anyone else? Few tells. One plus tells cryo. Pooja and Spurti tells it is pan. Yes, Pooja and Spurti. Very good. It is polyarthritis nodosa. Okay. So this one. which of the following was in this more than one can be correct more than one can be correct pga type which of the following vasculitis is associated with c anca which of the following vasculitis is associated with c anca answer for this a and d futel only a anyone with a bet with a better answer okay agreed a very good but can anyone come up with better answer since it is pgi type someone tells all all no it's not all wouldn't have given it off so easily as well it's not all d and e okay it is what i had mentioned is what i had mentioned was it was predominantly c and k and predominantly p and k but it doesn't mean that the ones with p and k won't have c and k positive yes very good one plus and the ones with p and k will not have c and k positive so the answer is one a b c d a b c and d 
A, B, C, and D. So again, very important to remember, and ka predominantly C and ka predominantly C and ka is wedge nurse. Is wedge nurse predominantly? It is again. I mentioned the word predominantly P and ka is microscopic polyangiitis, Chirk Strauss, and renal limited vasculitis. Okay, renal limited vasculitis. So it's important. If the same question was, if the same question was answer one best among them, then the answer would have been. Granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Okay, so the next question: Which of the following is known as neutrophilic vasculitis? Very easy. Yes, very good. All of you got it right. It is Bechet syndrome. So now let's see this. Which of the following is recommended drug combination? Which of the following is recommended drug combination for ANCA mediated vasculitis? Again, PGA type. This we have done in the class. Yes, very good. It is A and D glucocorticoids along with cyclophosphamide is given. So let's look into few images. With this, what what would you like to diagnose? With this, what would you like to diagnose? What would you like to diagnose, and what will be the differential diagnosis? Okay, what would be the differential diagnosis? Which nurse agreed? No, not Taka yes. No, simple. Till now we were doing no microscopic polyangiitis also can present with this only. Microscopic polyangiitis as well can present with the same thing. Correct? No. Yeah, Chirk Strauss also can present with this. Chirk Strauss also can present with this. Chirk Strauss also can present like this. Yes, but mainly we'll think of vaginas first. We'll think of vaginas next. Someone is telling syphilis. 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 Also, we can think of since there is septal this thing and all. Yeah, syphilis. Also, we can think of. Yeah, it is Takayasu arthritis. Takayasu arthritis. One is it is involving large vessel descending aorta is inward branches of arch of aorta over here left common carotid artery. There is narrowing. There is. Left common carotid narrow. So this is this one. So let's see this. This one. What is this? What can you think of in this? If this is shown to you, thromboangiitis obliterans. Yeah. Okay. Fine. One is thromboangiitis obliterans. Anything else? Yes. One more is cryo. Essential mixed cryoglobulinemia. One cryoglobulin precipitate in the distal because temperature is less. So this one and thromboangiitis obliterans, they have predilection to involve the peripheral vessels. So thromboangiitis obliterans as well. So now let's look at this. What is the diagnosis now? Yes, very good. It is vaginas. It is vaginas because there are multiple cavities. Multiple cavities are there. No, so mostly we can think of vaginas in this. This one. This one. What is the diagnosis over here? This image. What can we think of? If this image is given to you, along with HPE, HPE will show. Segmental involvement. If this is the blood vessel, this much part will be inflamed. Yes, very good. Polyarthritis nodosa because there are multiple microaneurysms. Multiple microaneurysms are present. This one, this one is very simple. This one is very simple. 
I should mention this is temporal artery. Temporal artery. Yeah, GCA, GCA. Giant cell arthritis, giant cell arthritis. So, I guess that's all with vasculitis. I have covered almost everything possible. Any doubts? Rheumatoid vasculitis, it, is, it can present as uh, any other. It's a secondary vasculitis, no? So rheumatoid vasculitis is nothing but a secondary immune-mediated vasculitis. SLE also can present with vasculitis. There is nothing specific that can be there in rheumatoid vasculitis as far as I can think so. Yeah, welcome, Mani. Any other doubts? Yeah, welcome guys. So hope that's all the doubts.